Hello everyone, Mark here back in the Vitamin Cinema Vault and I'm so excited to be recommending another film that I know is going to do you so much good. So, more years ago than I'm willing to admit, I went to the cinema with a university friend to see a film that we'd been told to see. I had no idea what to expect, but I remember my mouth falling open and my eyes widening in disbelief and delight. The story that came alive on the screen in a torrent of joyously funny words and increasingly eccentric events was so electrifying because this was a type of movie that I'd never seen before. And when the film finished, all that my friend and I could do was stare at each other and nod. There was nothing to say. We both knew that this film was very special and would remain special for both of us forever. The relentlessly colourful, irreverent and moving script for this film was written by the writer of The Killing Fields, Bruce Robinson, and it began life as an unpublished novel. There's a legend that the unpublished novel found its way into the hands of students and a cult was born. After Robinson adapted the novel into a screenplay, it eventually landed in the laps of Ray Cooper and George Harrison, the founders of Handmade Films. And thanks to them, Robinson was given the green light to direct this story. A story that will raise your spirits and touch your heart. This week's Vitamin Cinema film is... Withnell and I. Withnell and I brought two largely unknown actors, Richard E. Grant as Withnell and Paul McGann as I, to the attention of the world. They play a pair of out-of-work actors, a state of being that both could closely relate to. And the proximity that each actor has to his character serves to enhance the connection between the pair. There is a mercurial chemistry between Grant and McGann that one senses is in constant danger of spontaneously combusting. The love and anger and joy and terror that the two share is utterly convincing completely authentic. This is in part surely down to Robinson's directorial approach. He does very little to complicate the shooting of the scenes, so we are allowed to completely immerse ourselves in the frenetic, spiralling insanity of Withnell and I's lives. When Robinson does intervene, he does so to heighten the realism. For example, and I really don't want to give too much away, but there is a moment when Withnell resorts to drinking a bottle of lighter fluid. Unbeknownst known to Richard E. Grant, director Bruce Robinson, had the water in the bottle replaced with vinegar. As a result, Grant's reaction, captured on camera, is completely honest, totally hilarious. The honesty and intimacy of the story is so compelling because so much of it is drawn from real life experience that is as insane and funny as the story told in the film. When writing the script, Robinson had run out of money. He had just one working light bulb in his flat and he would take this light bulb from one room to another, screwing it in to each light fitting so he had sufficient light to work by. The character of Withnell is based on a man that Bruce Robinson knew, Jonathan Withnell, whom Bruce Robinson describes as an upper-class ne'er-do-well and total alcoholic who reversed his Aston Martin into a police car and instantly emigrated to America. Paul McGann's eye is, at least to some extent, Bruce Robinson himself. Robinson had begun his career striving to be an actor, but he never believed himself to be quite good enough. He never possessed quite enough confidence. And this uncertainty, this trepidation, dogs Paul McGann's character for almost the entire length of the film. It's funny and sad. And when he finally does find some measure of self-belief, it's actually heartbreaking. Withnell and I is a lot of things. It's a comedy, that's for sure. But it's also a tribute to a passing era, specifically the 60s, when hope and optimism reach a bend in the road that turns out to be a dead end. Watch the brilliant, wistful performance by Ralph Brown as Danny the Dealer in a scene close to the end of the film, lovingly known as the Camberwell Carrot Scene. Danny describes the end of the decade as the end of a trip that will dump a lot of refugees at the roadside. It's incredibly funny and incredibly touching. The film is also a comedy of manners and class and the conflicting standards of the stiff upper-lipped wartime generation and the long-haired experimental generation inspired by the Beatles, 
Hendrix and the Rolling Stones. What this film reveals is that ultimately there is more that unites us than divides us. Whichever tribe we belong to, we all want and need to be loved. So perhaps more than anything else, Whitnall and I is a love story. And like all the best love stories, it's a story of unrequited love. Love offered by one, but not acknowledged nor received by the other. The outpouring of anguish and yearning that is captured in a scene at the end of the film as Whitnall stands beneath an umbrella in the pouring rain will break your heart and remain there. Please, please, please watch Whitnall and I. I know it will do you good. Now, in the description box below the frame I'm sitting in, there are links to sites where you can get hold of this film and watch it. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please like it. And why not subscribe to Vitamin Cinema right now? If you click on the notifications icon, you'll automatically receive updates about the next Vitamin Cinema recommendation. I'm so pleased that people are enjoying these weekly doses of screen goodness. And if you're a member of the Vitamin Cinema tribe, why not share the goodness with your family, your friends, your followers, and your fans? And make a point of joining me here every Thursday. Great. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next week. Now it's over to you. It's time to watch Withnal and I. I promise you, it will do you good. Thank you.